Hello everyone, this is Glenda and welcome back to my channel Creative Grandma. Today's crochet tutorial is going to be for my festive snowman dishcloth. This little guy was made using Premier Home Cotton, which is my preferred yarn for anything that you make for the kitchen. So for this dishcloth, you're going to need the Premier Home Cotton in green or whatever color you want to make his scarf. So you don't need very much yarn for this. You're also going to need the white, so about a half of skein or less for the face. You're going to need a small amount of black for the eyes and the mouth. A small amount of orange, just a tiny bit of orange for his nose. You're going to need a few yards of red for that hat band and the berry. I'm using blue for the hat because black was too hard to photograph. This looks adorable when you have a black hat, but you can make them in whatever colors you choose. You're also going to need a size H8 five millimeter crochet hook. And last but not least, you're going to need a yarn needle to weave in those ends. Our snowman measures eight inches across from the tip of his hat to the tip of his hat and when you come down to his face he measures about seven inches across and when you measure him from top to bottom he's eight and a half inches tall just a perfect size for the kitchen so grab your yarn grab your hook and let's get started to begin we're going to start with the premier home cotton and I'm using the color corn flour so I'm going to go ahead and attach my yarn to my hook now I just tie a double knot when I attach my yarn I'm leaving a little bit longer length when I start because when I do this it makes it a lot easier to weave in this end when you leave a little bit longer length we're going to go ahead and we're going to start and we're going to chain 28 1 2 3 continue until you have a chain with 28 chains and I'll be back and we'll start row 1 I have my chain 28 made and now we're going to start row 1 row 1 is a very simple row to begin row 1 we're going to skip this first chain you're going to insert into the second chain from hook work a single crochet insert into the next chain work a single crochet we're going to work one single crochet in each chain across insert into the next chain work a single crochet insert into the next chain work a single crochet Continue and work one single crochet in each chain across and I'll meet you at the end of row one. I'm over at the end of row one and you should have a total of 27 single crochet across. We started with the chain 28. You started in the second chain from the hook which gives you a total of 27 stitches. So now we're going to start row two. For row two, you're going to chain one and you're going to turn your work. You're going to skip that beginning chain one. You're going to insert your hook right into the first stitch. So just skip your chain one, follow it down, and your first stitch will be right beside the bottom of the chain one. Insert under the top two loops, work a single crochet. Now when you're working on the wrong side of your work, if you have trouble seeing your stitches, just turn your work towards you and then you can see the top of each stitch across. Insert into the next stitch under the top two loops, work a single crochet. Insert into the next stitch, work a single crochet you're going to continue and work one single crochet in each stitch across to the end of the row and I'll meet you at the end of row two. I'm over at the end of row two. This is what your work should look like and you should have a total of 27 single crochet across your work. So now we're going to go ahead and start row three. Row three, you're going to chain one. You're going to turn your work. 
you're going to skip that beginning chain one, insert into the top of that first double crochet stitch, make sure you go under both of those top loops, work a single crochet. Insert into the next stitch, work a single crochet. For row three, you're just going to work one single crochet in each stitch across. Insert into the next stitch, work a single crochet. Continue and work one single crochet in each stitch across and I'll meet you at the end of row three. I'm over at the end of row three. This is what your work should look like and again you should have 27 single crochet stitches. So now I'm going to fasten off my blue. So again, I leave a long length just because it's easier for me to weave in those ends and then I just trim it after I weave them in. I chain two when I fasten off. I pull out my yarn, grab my yarn, pinch, pull down, and it creates a secure knot. And then I'll just weave my ends in over on the back when I'm all finished with my dishcloth. So now what you're going to do is you're going to grab your cranberry color or your red yarn. So we just fastened off here at the end of round three. So turn your work. And then we're going to count over to the third single crochet. We're going to skip the first two stitches. One, two. Insert into that third single crochet and we're going to pull our new color through. Now again, I leave a longer length because it helps me knot and secure it with my yarn needle when I am finished with my dishcloth. I'm going to pull my new color through and I'm going to chain one. Insert back into that same single crochet, which is the third single crochet, work a single crochet. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this yarn hang in the back and then when I'm all done I'll weave that in by coming up to the top of the row and weaving it into the same colored stitches. So now we're just going to work one single crochet in each stitch across until we get to the last two stitches. Insert into the next stitch, work a single crochet insert into the next stitch, work a single crochet. So go ahead and work one single crochet in each stitch across to within those last two stitches and I'll meet you there. I'm over at the end of row four. Again, we skipped the first two stitches. We worked one single crochet in each stitch across until we got to the last two stitches and then we stopped. We're going to skip those last two stitches and leave them unworked. This is what your work should look like. Now when you lay this down, there might be a slight curve to it. Now this will be corrected because we're going to be working down here in this foundation chain. So that will straighten that out a little bit straighter. So don't let that little bit of a curve concern you there. So now we're getting ready to start row five. Row five, you're going to chain one. You're going to turn your work. You're going to skip that beginning chain one. Insert into the top two loops of that first stitch. Work a single crochet. Insert into the next stitch under the top two loops. Work a single crochet. Insert into the next stitch, work a single crochet. Continue and work one single crochet in each stitch across. You'll have a total of 23 single crochet and I'll meet you at the end of row five. I'm over at the end of row five. You should have a total of 23 stitches and now we're getting ready to start row six. We're going to chain one. You're going to turn your work. You're going to skip that beginning chain one, insert into that first stitch, work a single crochet. For row six, we're going to work one single crochet in each stitch across. Insert into the next stitch, making sure you're under both top loops of that stitch, 
and work a single crochet. Insert into the next stitch, work a single crochet. Continue and work one single crochet in each stitch across and I'll meet you at the end of row six. End of row six, you should have a total of 23 single crochet across your work. And now we're going to go ahead and fasten off our red or cranberry, whatever color you're using. Again, I usually chain two, one, two, pull my hook up, pull that yarn out, grab my yarn, pinch, pull down, and it creates a secure knot. Now we're going to turn our work. You're going to insert your hook into that first stitch and we're going to start round seven. We're going to take our blue or the cornflower color, whatever color you're using, and again, I leave about a six to eight inch length. I really like those long ends, and you can always trim it after you knot and secure it when you're finished with your yarn needle. You're just going to pull that new color through. You're going to chain one, insert into that same beginning stitch, and work a single crochet. Now I'm going to leave my end hang because I don't want that blue to show through the red. So what I do is I'll carry that up when I get the dishcloth finished and bring it right up that first stitch and then weave it in through the blue stitches at the top of the row. Insert into the top of the next stitch, making sure you go under both loops of that stitch. Work a single crochet. So for this row, we're just working one single crochet in each stitch across. Insert into the next stitch, work a single crochet. Continue and work one single crochet in each stitch across, and I'll meet you at the end of row seven. I'm over at the end of row seven. This is what your work should look like. So now we're going to work rows 8 through 14, and all we're going to do is what we just did for row 7. So we're going to work. So you're going to work 7 more rows of single crochet, just like you worked row 7. So let's begin. You're going to chain 1. You're going to turn your work. You're going to skip that first chain 1 insert under the top two loops of that first stitch, work a single crochet. Insert into the next stitch, work a single crochet. So for rows eight through 14, you're going to continue and work one single crochet in each stitch across for seven more rows, and I'll meet you at the end of row 14. I'm over at the end of row 14. This is what your work should look like. This is the bottom of the hat, and then this is the band on the hat, and then this is the top of the hat. So now we're going to go ahead and fasten off. Again, when I fasten off, I just chain two, pull my hook up, pull the yarn out, grab that string of yarn, pinch, and then you're going to pull down and it creates a secure knot. So now what we're going to do is you're going to turn your hat over and then you're going to turn it upside down. I'm going to take my white and leave about a six to eight inch length. So when you're looking at your work, it's upside down and now this is the foundation row that's at the top of your work. So what you're going to do is pick up your work and we're going to skip the first two chains. You're going to look at your work and you're going to skip the first chain, the second chain, you're going to insert your hook into that third chain on the foundation chain, and then you're going to pull your white through. And again, I leave my ends hang and I'll weave them in when I come back. I'm going to chain one, and I'm going to insert back into that same stitch and work a single crochet. Now we're going to yarn over, 
you're going to insert into the next chain or at the base of that next single crochet stitch, which will be your next chain, work a double crochet. Insert into the next chain or at the base of that next single crochet, and that's how you find your next chain, work a single crochet. And that is going to be your repeat. So let's begin the repeat again. You're going to yarn over, insert into the next chain, work a double crochet. Insert into the next chain, work a single crochet. Again, that is the end of the repeat. Let me show you one more time. You're going to yarn over, insert into the next chain, work a double crochet. Insert into the next chain, work a single crochet. And that is the end of the repeat. So go ahead and repeat double crochet into the next chain, single crochet into the next, repeat that across until you get to within the last two chains of the row. You're going to stop there and I'll meet you at the end of row 15. I'm over at the end of row 15. This is what your work should look like. You skipped the first two stitches. You worked a single crochet, double crochet across that foundation row. You ended with a single crochet and you skipped the last two stitches. You should have a total of 23 stitches across your work. So now we're going to start row 16. Row 16 and 17 will be your repeat rows, so this is where you're going to need to click back on the video if you need additional help. So let's begin row 16. We're going to start with the chain one. You're going to turn your work. Now with this row, that chain one does not count as a stitch. We're going to work a double crochet right into that first single crochet. Yarn over, insert into that first single crochet, and work a double crochet. Insert into that next double crochet stitch, and you're going to work a single crochet. So what you're doing is you're working the opposite stitch of what you're going into. So if it's a single crochet, you're going to double crochet, and then you're going to single crochet into the double crochet double crochet into the single crochet, and single crochet into the double crochet. Very simple. So let's do it again. You're going to yarn over, insert into that next stitch, which is a single crochet, and work a double crochet. Insert into the next stitch, which is a double crochet, but we're going to work a single crochet. Again, you're working the opposite stitch of what you're going into one more time and then you can continue down the row. Yarn over, insert into that next stitch, work a double crochet. Insert into the next stitch, work a single crochet. Continue across your row and you will end with a double crochet into that last stitch. I'll meet you at the end of row 16. I'm over at the end of row 16. I have one stitch remaining. So when you look at your work and you're not sure where the end of your row is, what I do is you'll see this little sideways bar at the end of your stitch. So that tells me I have one stitch to go. And when you turn your work and you'll see that one stitch here on top of your work, you'll know that is another stitch. So we're going to end with a double crochet into our last stitch yarn over, insert into the top of that ending stitch, work a double crochet. Row 16 is finished. You should have a total of 23 stitches across your work. Now we're going to begin row 17. We're going to start with the chain one. You're going to turn your work. 
The chain one does not count as a stitch. You're going to skip the chain one space. You're going to insert right into the top of that first stitch, which is a double crochet, and you're going to work a single crochet. Your next stitch is a single crochet, so you want to make a double crochet into the next stitch. Yarn over, insert into that next single crochet, and work a double crochet. Insert into that next stitch, and again you'll see that's a double crochet because it's bigger and longer. So you're going to work a single crochet into this next stitch. Insert into the top, make sure you're going under the top two loops, work a single crochet. The next stitch is a single crochet, so you need to work a double crochet into this next stitch. Yarn over, insert into that next single crochet, and work a double crochet. Insert into that next stitch, work a single crochet. And you're just going to repeat that across the row. Double crochet into the next single crochet, and single crochet into that next double crochet. Work that across, and I'll meet you at the end of row 17. I'm over at the end of row 17. I have one stitch to go. So your ending stitch is going to look a little funny because it's going to be bent down a little and you'll have this little piece sticking up. You want to make sure you turn that work until you see those two loops. So don't go in this part. That is just the stitch being bent down. Just make sure you turn your work, see where that last stitch is, insert under the top two loops of that last stitch, work a single crochet. Row 17 is finished. So now what you're going to do is you're going to click back on the video and you're going to repeat row 16 and 17 three more times. So you're going to work six more rows and again just click back on the video, repeat row 16 and 17 three more times and I'll meet you at the end of row 23. I'm over at the end of row 23. This is what your work should look like. And now we have one more row to go of the snowman space and we're just going to repeat row 16. We're going to start and we're going to chain one. You're going to turn your work we're going to skip that beginning chain one and we're going to work a double crochet into that first stitch. Yarn over, insert into the first stitch and work a double crochet. Insert into the next stitch and work a single crochet. Yarn over, insert into the next stitch work a double crochet. And that is the end of the repeat. So let's do it one more time. You're going to insert into the next stitch, work a single crochet. Yarn over, insert into the next stitch, work a double crochet. And that is the end of the repeat. So go ahead and work one single crochet into the next stitch, double crochet into the next, work across to the end of the row, you'll end with the double crochet, and I'll meet you there. I'm over at the end of row 24. You should have 23 stitches across, and now we're going to fasten off. His snowman face is finished. I always chain two. Pull up my hook, pull that yarn out, grab the yarn, pinch, pull down and it creates a secure knot. So now what we're going to do is we're going to turn our work. Now whatever color you want to use for the scarf, we're going to put a scarf underneath his little face. So I'm using Christmas green. So to begin row 25 you're going to insert your hook into that top stitch, that very first stitch. Grab your new color. If you don't want to use the Christmas green, you can choose to use the red in the hat and bring the red back down for his scarf or whatever color you want to choose. I'm just going to, again, leave about a six inch length. I'm going to pull my new color through 
and I'm going to chain one. Insert back into that same first stitch and work a single crochet. Now when I'm working with these high contrasting colors where they are really light to dark, I never crochet over my yarn end because what's going to happen is you're going to see that green in the white when you turn your work over. So when I do this, I leave that yarn hang down and when I'm all finished, I'm going to bring it back and use my yarn needle and I'll take this extra piece of yarn and I'll actually bring it up through that first stitch and then weave it into the stitches in the green row. If you try to crochet over it, you're going to see that green through the white and you don't want that. So leave your yarn and hang. We're going to work one single crochet in each stitch across. Insert into the next stitch, work a single crochet insert into the next stitch, make sure you're going underneath both of those two top loops, work a single crochet. Insert into the next stitch, work a single crochet. Continue and work one single crochet in each stitch across to the end of the row and I'll meet you at the end of row 25. I'm over at the end of row 25. This is what your work should look like. You should have one single crochet in each stitch across. And now we're getting ready to start row 26. Row 26, we're going to start and chain three. One, two, and three. You're going to turn your work. This beginning chain three counts as your first double crochet. So when you're working this stitch, you always skip that first stitch because your chain three counts as the first stitch. So we're going to yarn over, you're going to insert into the very next stitch under the top two loops and work a double crochet. For this row, we're going to work one double crochet in each stitch across. Yarn over, insert into the next stitch, work a double crochet. Yarn over, insert into the next stitch, work a double crochet. Continue and work one double crochet in each stitch across to the end and I'll meet you at the end of row 26. I'm over at the end of row 26. This is what your work should look like. You should have 23 double crochet across and that includes that beginning chain three which counts as the first double crochet. So now we're getting ready to start row 27. Now row 27 we're going to add a little bit of texture to a scarf. We're going to start with the chain three, one, two, and three. You're going to turn your work and we're going to start the repeat right away. You're going to yarn over. We're going to work a front post double crochet into the next stitch. Insert your hook between the first stitch and the second stitch, right between the stitches from front to back. Take your hook from the back and bring it back to the front underneath the post of that stitch. You're just taking your hook underneath the post of the stitch and then you're just going to work a regular double crochet. Yarn over, pull underneath and around the post of that stitch. Yarn over, pull through two loops. Yarn over and pull through two loops. Now we're going to work a double crochet into the next stitch. Yarn over, insert into the next stitch, work a double crochet. And that is the end of the repeat. So you're going to have one stitch sticking up for texture and the other one's going to be kind of down underneath to the side. So let's do the repeat again. So now we're going to work a front post double crochet around the post of that next stitch. Yarn over, insert from front to back around the post of the stitch and then from back to front underneath the stitch and out through the front. So you're just taking your hook just under the post of that next stitch and now we're just going to work a double crochet. Yarn over, pull underneath the 
post to that stitch, yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over and pull through two loops. Your front post double crochet is made. You're going to yarn over, insert into the next stitch, work a regular double crochet. And that is the end of the repeat. And when you look at your work, you can start seeing that texture. So let me do it one more time and then you can continue on your own. We're going to work a front post double crochet around this next stitch, yarn over, insert your hook from front to back and back to front around the post of that next stitch, work a double crochet, yarn over, pull underneath the post of the stitch, yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over and pull through two loops. Your front post is made. You're going to yarn over, insert into the next stitch and work a double crochet. And that is the end of the repeat. So go ahead and repeat the repeat across. You're going to work a front post double crochet around the post of this next stitch and then you're going to work a double crochet into the top of the next stitch. Repeat that across and you'll end with a double crochet into the top of your ending chain three. I'll work my front post double crochet into that next to the last stitch and I'll come back and show you how to finish the row. I'm over at the end of row 27 and now we're going to finish the row and you'll notice we have that ending turning chain three right here. That is going to be your last stitch. So you're going to yarn over. You're going to come up to the top of that beginning chain three at the end. One, two, three. Insert your hook into the top of that chain three. Work a double crochet. And that is how you end your row. So row 27, you should have a total of 23 stitches and that includes this beginning chain three that counts as your first double crochet. So now we have one row to go, very simple row. We're going to chain one and you're going to turn your work. You're going to skip that beginning chain one, insert into the top of the next stitch, work a single crochet. Insert into the next stitch, work a single crochet. Insert into the next stitch and work a single crochet. Continue and work one single crochet in each stitch across and I'll meet you at the end turning chain and show you how to finish the row. I'm over at the end of row 28 and now we're going to single crochet into the top of that ending turning chain three. You're going to count up one, two, three, insert into the top of that chain three in the very top chain and work a single crochet. So row 28 is finished. So I'm going to fasten off. Row 28 is finished. This is what your work should look like. Now this is on the wrong side when you finish row 28. So you want to flip your snowman dishcloth over. This is what it looks like. And the right side, your textured stitches of your scarf will be on the right side of your work. So you can see how those raised stitches are coming up. And when you turn it on the back, you have this big uh, ridge right down through the center going lengthwise, that's the wrong side. Your right side, your stitches are going up and down to create that texture. So now you're just going to set your snowman dishcloth aside, grab your orange yarn, and we're going to start the nose. I have my yarn attached to my hook and I just used a double knot. You can use whichever method you prefer. And now we need to chain 10. Yarn over, pull through, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. We're going to begin row one and we're going to single crochet into the second chain from hook. Skip that first chain, insert into the second chain from hook, and work a single crochet. Insert into the next chain and you're going to work a single crochet. 
Now we're going to work one half double crochet in each of the next three chain. Yarn over, insert into that next chain, yarn over, pull through, yarn over and pull through all three loops on the hook. You just worked your first half double crochet. Yarn over, insert into the next stitch, work a half double crochet. Yarn over, insert into the next stitch, work a half double crochet. Now we're going to work one double crochet in each of the next two chain. Yarn over the hook, insert into the next chain, yarn over, pull through. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over and pull through two. You just made your double crochet. Yarn over, insert into the next chain, work a double crochet. Now we're going to finish the row by working one triple or treble in each of the next two chain. Yarn over twice, insert into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through. You have four loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over and pull through two. We have one stitch to go. We're going to work a treble or triple in this last chain yarn over twice, insert into that last chain, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over and pull through two. Now we're going to fasten off but you're going to leave a long length so you can sew this nose onto your dish glove. So leave a long enough length. Now I'm going to leave a pretty long length because I always like to have a lot more than I need than not enough. So probably I'm leaving two feet, which is way too much. But like I said, I always like too much than not enough. So I just chain two, pull my yarn out, and then just pull down, and it creates a secure knot. So now I'm going to grab my dishcloth. So now I have my dishcloth right side facing. I'm going to get my yarn needle. I'm going to sew my nose onto my dishcloth. So I have my nose and what I'm going to do is first I'm going to take this little end and I'm going to weave it into the back of my work because I don't want that end showing. So I'm just going to take my yarn needle right through the back of my stitches and it's easier when you have it. See this is why I have trouble when you have a shorter length. To try to thread that through the needle and maneuver it through the stitches it's really hard. So I'm putting my needle through the stitches first and then I'm just going to bring this up and thread it in my needle and then you can just pull it through those stitches on the back of your work. Clip that yarn off because this is going to be on the wrong side and then I'm going to turn my nose over. So then what you want to do is grab your snowman, let me zoom out a little bit more. Again you got to make sure your right side is facing and because he has a long nose he's going to be looking sideways. So you have to remember your nose is in the center of the face so when you're looking sideways we want to kind of try to keep the nose right, the end of this nose right towards the center of his face. So I'm going to go ahead and thread my yarn on my yarn needle again for that long length for sewing in. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this a little bit so I can work with it but kind of position your nose Maybe you want him to look like his nose is pointed up in the air a little bit, which I think would look good. So I'm going to have his nose kind of up in the air a little bit. And then I'm going to start sewing. Now I don't want a lot of this orange showing on the back. So what I'm going to do, I hope you can see this. You might not be able to see it too good, but I'm going to try to show you anyhow. I'm just going to try to get the top of the stitches. So when you're looking at your stitches, instead of going all the way through to the back, just try to grab the top stitches of the stitch on top of your work and then weave it through to the front of your nose. And when you turn it over, see how you cannot see that stitching? You don't want it to show on the back. Lay your nose, kind of keep it in position, and as you're sewing, make sure as you're going around it's not getting out of uh, shape of where you want it. Make sure it keeps its shape of where you want it. You may decide to put a pin 
Uh, maybe a safety pin would be better so you don't stab yourself or pin it in place. And then as you sew, again, you want to try to get the top of the stitches. So here again, I'm just going to go into the top of the stitch and I'm going to pull them up so you can see. I'm just on the top of the stitch. I'm not going all the way through the dishcloth, just the top of those stitches. And then I'm going to bring it right in through the end of my nose, right through the end of that stitch. Grab those stitches. Pull up and then pull your yarn through. And it's just, and, and make sure your yarn comes tight and it's not out. It's nice and invisible. And again, when you turn your work over, you're not going to see that orange yarn. Now there's just a little tiny bit there that you can see. But you, this is what you don't want to do. You don't want to put your needle down through and out the back. And you don't want to come up through. I'm just going to do one and then I'm going to rip it out. So when you do that, look what happens. You don't want these stitches on the back. It's just not a very good look to your dish clock. And I'm sorry about all my ends. I should have weaved them in first. So I'm going to go ahead and rip that stitch back out. And again, if you don't like the position of the nose, then just rip out those stitches. Take your time so you don't go into the nose and and cut any of your other stitches. Just rip it back out and start again. I'm going to look at the position of my nose. Now he's getting a little too up in the air. I don't want to be too stuck up. So I'm going to bring that nose back down where it belongs. Put my finger there. Turn my dishcloth because this is how I can see to do it. I'm just going to grab the next set of stitches. I'm just going to go right down here grab these two here and again it's the top of those stitches whatever's close and then just bring it up through the side of that stitch and then pull tight so it's invisible not so tight that it distorts the dishcloth but tight enough that it kind of blends in and again when you turn your work over you're not seeing that orange yarn so just continue in that manner around your nose till you get to the other side so when you're done sewing your nose on and you're back at the beginning I'll be back and I'll show you how I fasten off my yarn so now I'm back to where I started I sewed my nose on this is what it looks like and when you turn your work over you can see that you cannot see any of the stitches from sewing that nose on and this is a good way if you want to make your dishcloth reversible you may be able to do that by putting a face on the other side as well it'll just have a different look to this side so let's turn it back on the right side and let's finish putting the nose on so what I do now when I finish and you think how am I supposed to fasten off I use my yarn needle I go back underneath one of those stitches a strand of yarn here's a strand I'm just going under that first strand I'm going to take my yarn needle underneath my yarn pull up and what's going to happen is you're going to create a loop and this is how I tie my knot I just take my needle and you just put it right through that loop and then you tighten it up just pull it tight use your finger if you have to push it down and then what I like to do is I like to take my yarn needle and I like to go down underneath the work and you're going to weave your needle in through the back of these stitches right between the back side of the stitch but not down through the white portion and then I'm just going to pull that end out I kind of pull it tight, make sure it's nice and snug and secure. And then I'm just going to trim off. I pulled that a little too tight, so I'm just going to push that stitch back where it belongs. And then you sewed your nose on. And now we're going to do the eyes. Now before I do the eyes, I just wanted to show you, I was making one with the black hat. So I wanted to show you another version. Now because black is so hard to photograph, I started making this one and then I decided to do the video with the blue yarn for the hat so you can see it better. But this is what it looks like if you want to make the black hat for your snowman. So it's your option on what color you want to choose. But I like the black hat as well. So our nose is sewed on and now we're going to make the eyes. Now the eyes we're going to use black and we're just going to make two little circles. 
So we're just going to make the circles and then place them wherever you want on your snowman. Now, because black yarn is extremely hard to photograph, I'm going to show you how to make the eyes with blue, but you're going to want to use the black because you want the eyes to match the outline of his mouth. So grab your black, and again, I'm using blue just so you can see what I'm doing better. I have my yarn attached to my hook, and again, I'm using blue because it shows up better on camera, but you will be using black. We're going to begin with the chain two. One and two. And I hope you can see this good because it's really small and it's really hard for me to grab a hold of it. So just be patient when you're making the eyes. You're going to skip that first chain. You're going to insert into the second chain from hook and we're going to work six single crochet. There's one. Insert back into that same chain. Work your second single crochet. You're going to insert back into that same space where you worked your last stitch. Work your third single crochet. Insert into that same chain. Work your fourth single crochet. Now you should be able to take that piece of yarn where that's left over from starting and you should be able to work right over that string of yarn now. Insert back into that same space. I'm going underneath that piece of yarn and I'm going to work my fifth single crochet. Insert back into that same space. Work your sixth single crochet. And then you can count your stitches. I always count backwards, one, two, three, four, five, and six. So now we're going to join our round and we're going to join with a slip stitch into that first single crochet. Insert underneath the top two loops and slip stitch. Yarn over, pull through that stitch, and pull through the loop on your hook. And that's all there is to making the eyes. So now you want to fasten off so again, I like to leave a longer length, give me plenty of room to sew those eyes on, and then you can always trim that when you're done. Now for the eyes, I'm just going to chain one, pull my hook up and pull that yarn out, and just pull down and tighten that up. So go ahead and make your second eye. Again, you're using black for the eyes. So go ahead and make your second eye, and I'll be back, and we'll sew on our eyes. So my two eyes are finished, so now you just want to figure out where you want to place them. I'm going to place one about in the center of the nose on top, right in the center of the white section, and then I'm going to place one over here beside it. You just have to kind of figure out how you want them to look. If you want them to be over here farther, you can. I'm just going to place mine sort of like right here, because I want them to kind of look like he's looking sideways. And then what I forgot to do was I'm just going to trim this off on the back. I'm going to leave a little bit hang. I don't want to cut it too close. You can see that little bit. And that will be underneath the eye. Now the reason I crocheted the eyes was because if you try to stitch them on, that could work loose while you're doing the dishes. So this way it really secures those eyes. And when you sew them in place, it won't come unraveled. So I'm going to go ahead and sew my eyes on in the same manner that I sewed the nose on. And when I get my eyes on, I'll be back and we'll continue. So now we're going to do our mouth. Now I did embroider my mouth on and I just did not like the way it looked. So I decided to change the way I was going to do it. So I decided to make a chain and then I'm going to sew my chain on. So for the mouth, I already attached my yarn to my hook and we're just going to chain 17. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17. 
So you want to fasten off and leave a long length for sewing because we're going to sew all the way across the mouth. So I'd rather have too much yarn than not enough. I'm just going to pull my hook up, pull my yarn out, and you're just going to pull and that secures your end of your chain. So then you're going to bring your snowman over. Sorry about that black mark there. I'm just going to cover that up. I'm going to place my chain and form it into a smile, like so. And I just think it'll give it a nicer look because I just couldn't get it to look the way I wanted. So now I'm going to weave my yarn end into my yarn needle. And now I'm just going to go through those top stitches. Make sure you have it where you want it. So I think that looks like a pretty good smile. You want to try to make it even on both sides of the dishcloth or kind of center it in the center of the face. So I'm going to go ahead and just sew this on. And I'm just going right through the center of the chains. So I'm going to position my mouth where I want it. And as you're sewing across, make sure that it stays in the position you want. Every time you go down through a chain, make sure that it does not distort and it ends up down here. Make sure you check it with each stitch. Just continue sewing right through the center of each chain across until you get your mouth sewed on. And then we're just going to weave these ends underneath our mouth and clip off the ends. So go ahead and sew your mouth on and I'll be right back and we'll finish our snowman. So I sewed my chain on to form the mouth. Now I'm over at the end. So let me zoom up a little bit more. So now what you're going to do is you're going to take your yarn needle. Let's see if I can get this out of the way. You're just going to go into one of the stitches right towards the end of that chain. Go back through the chain. Pull it through until you have a loop. So let me grab my end here. Once you have that loop, you're just going to take your yarn needle and go through the loop and then pull it tight to form a knot. Just tighten that up. And then you're just going to take your yarn needle and go back underneath this chain and you're going to go into those white stitches right on top underneath and you're going to weave this end in and make sure you're grabbing either the chain or the white stitches underneath to weave that in. I'm going to pull it back up through my chain. I pull it a little snug to make sure it's nice and tight. Then I'm going to clip off that end and you're just going to do the same with the other end. I'm going to weave my end in and I'll be right back. So our snowman's mouth is sewed on. Now I'm going to add another decorative touch to my snowman dishcloth. And I'm going to put two little holly berry leaves up here and put a holly berry right in the center. So it's up to you whether you want to add that extra accent. So grab your grain. So I already have my yarn attached to the hook and we're going to begin with the chain six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. So now we're going to start round one and make our little leaf. We're going to slip stitch into the third chain from hook. You're going to skip one, two, insert your hook into that third chain, and slip stitch. Yarn over, pull through, and pull through the loop on your hook. You're going to single crochet into the next chain. Insert into the next chain. Work a single crochet. You're going to chain three. One, two, and three. We're going to slip stitch into the top front loop of the single crochet we just made. So insert your hook, bring your hook around and go into the front loop, top to bottom, and slip stitch. Insert into the next chain, work a single crochet. You're going to chain three, one, two, three, 
bring your hook around to the front and take it from top to bottom down through the front loop and slip stitch. Yarn over, pull through that front loop and pull through the loop on your hook. Now you're going to work four half double crochet into that ending chain, yarn over, insert into that ending chain and work four half double crochet. One, yarn over, insert into that same ending chain, work your second half double crochet, yarn over, insert back into that ending chain, work your third half double crochet, yarn over, insert back into that ending chain, and work your fourth half double crochet. You're going to chain three, one, two, and three. You're going to slip stitch into the top of the last stitch made. Bring your hook around, take it down from top to bottom through the front loop of that last half double crochet made, and slip stitch. Yarn over, pull through that front loop, and pull through the loop on your hook. Now you're going to insert into the next chain work a single crochet. You're going to chain three, one, two, and three. We're going to slip stitch into the front loop of that last stitch made. Take your hook, bring it down to the front, go from top to bottom through that front loop, and slip stitch. Go through that front loop and go through the loop on your hook. So now we're going to skip the remaining chains and we're going to join with a slip stitch underneath the beginning slip stitch. So right here's our beginning slip stitch. Just insert your hook into that space and you're going to join with the slip stitch. Yarn over, pull through that space and pull through the loop on your hook. Now you're going to fasten off leaving a sewing length and again I like to leave a longer length and trim it instead of being too short. So I'm just going to yarn over, pull through the loop on my hook and pull up on my hook and pull that yarn out and then pull to tighten. And this is what your little leaf should look like. So I'm just going to trim this piece of yarn in the back now. So now what you want to do is go ahead and make another leaf because you need a total of two. And when you come back, we'll go ahead and make the berry and then we'll sew these to the hat and then we'll be finished. My two leaves are finished. This is what they look like. So I'm going to set them aside and then we're going to start our berry. So for our little berry in the center of our leaves, we need to start with the red. Now I already tied a double knot to start, so you can join your yarn in whichever method you prefer. We're going to begin with a chain two. One and two. We're going to skip that first chain. You're going to insert into the second chain from hook, and we're going to work five single crochet. There's one, insert back into that same chain, work your second single crochet, insert back into that same chain, work your third single crochet, insert back into that same chain, work your fourth single crochet, insert back into that same chain and work your fifth single crochet. So now we're just going to fasten off. We're not going to join the round. You're just going to yarn over, pull through that loop and then pull up on your hook. Just pull tight and that creates a secure knot. So now you want to grab your yarn needle. We're going to weave our end through the eye of the needle and then we're going to weave through the top five stitches so you're going to take your yarn needle and you're just going to go in and out. You're going to come over to that first stitch, weave in through the stitch, weave out through the other one. So you went down through the top, now you're coming from the bottom up through the second stitch. 
go from the top to the bottom through the third stitch, bottom through the top through the fourth stitch, and then top to bottom down through the fifth stitch. And then what you want to do is you're just going to, I'm going to trim my little end here off first. And then you're going to pull tight. And when you pull that, it creates your little berry for between our leaves. So that's ready to sew on. So grab your little dishcloth. Let me zoom out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to position my leaves. Now I like to turn them sideways. Now this one I'm going to turn so it's pointing towards that corner. And then this one I'm going to put kind of right on top so it's pointing towards this corner. Now you might want to move them over just a little bit if you, if you would like. And then once you sew them together, now I overlap them just a little bit. Sew them on and I'm sewing right down through the center and leaving the edges loose. And then you're going to take that berry and you're just going to sew that berry right to the center of your holly leaves on your dishcloth. So I'm going to sew my holly leaves and my berry on and when I get that done I'll be right back and show you the finished snowman. So our snowman dishcloth is finished. The snowman dishcloth was made using that Premier Home Cotton. Now I had a few suggestions on other ways you can use this pattern. Now if you wanted to make a matching pot holder then use the Premier Home Cotton and you would make one snowman front and then you would just repeat this portion but just don't put the face and the decoration up here of the leaves on and then just sew the front to the back and you have a beautiful pot holder and you can put maybe a chain 10 loop up here to hang them up make your kitchen festive for the holidays the other idea I had I just didn't have time to make the other samples to show you is to maybe use a worsted weight yarn and then you can make these into gift bags again by making the front as the front of the gift bag and then making the back the same as this only leave the face and the leaves and berries off Sew the two together around three sides, fill with someone's favorite bag of cookie mix, a wooden spoon, and it's a great idea for if you're looking for something to give a co-worker, a cute little homemade gift like this filled with goodies, maybe their favorite bag of candy, and you can get a lot of these out of worsted weight yarn. But if you're using this for the kitchen, for the dishcloth or pot holder, please use the cotton yarn for anything to do with being in the kitchen. The gift bags, worsted, acrylic yarn is fine, but not for the kitchen. So thank you everybody for stopping by today and making this festive little snowman dishcloth. I hope you had fun and until next time, happy crocheting everyone!